Dear friends, I'm also going to start like Amelia by thanking. It's not very innovative, but uh, it needs to be done. I want to start by thanking all of you for making this Congress a great event. It has been a fantastic event, and that is thanks to all of you. Thank you for your energy, for your discussions, and for your engagement. There was a lot, a lot of work. The steering group knows it. A lot of energy and time investing in preparing it. But you are definitely worth it. It has, been, it has been four days full of intense and positive work. We have freely discussed multiple proposals and responsibly we have been able to find common ground and compromises that allow us to move forward together. We're now leaving Liverpool, but enriched and ready to continue our mission. What is our mission? It's to offer alternative solutions to the current problems while keeping in mind the future. In these four days, we've met old friends and made new ones too. And together, we've confirmed what a big global green family we are. We truly are. We are a movement with cooperation and networking strongly rooted in its DNA, focused on strengthening the links that will allow us to jointly campaign on fighting climate change, on strengthening democracy and overcoming inequality. Today, Today I'm going to talk about us, because we deserve it. I'm going to talk about us, the Greens, as activists, about our values and about the current political agenda that we need to face. Greens are the best alternative to the most unthreatening challenge that we face today, the social and ecological sustainability of our planet. But not only this, there are many other conflicts, and of course we aim to have a voice on them too. But let me insist on a fundamental aspect. The only ecosystem compatible with human life is our planet. And therefore, there's no transformation strategy possible if it does not prioritize the planet. The environmental fight and green activism has many different faces all over the world and too often may imply much sacrifice, pain and sometimes even death. Today, here, in this closing speech, I want to express my respect and admiration to those who have suffered and to those especially who have lost their lives defending sustainability, environmental and green causes. I'm talking about Chico Mendes or Berta Cáceres. I'm talking about Isidoro, Isidoro Valdenegro in Mexico, Laura Vázquez in Guatemala, Emilsen Mayoma in Colombia, or about Zaida Catalan from Sweden, murdered in Congo four days ago. I'm talking about the 185 environmental victims reported by Global Witness in 2015, about the 116 in 2014, and many others, or about our friend in Belarus, arrested and harassed by an authoritarian regime. To all of them, our recognition and our respect, our solidarity to their families and, organiz and organizations, because their fight is our fight. 
<clears throat> Dear friends, our green values bring not only a philosophical understanding, but among other ideologies, a very different and profoundly moral and ethical perspective. Max Weber allocated in politics the task to manage the future and take responsibility of it. Green values are the best alternative solution to do just that. We have the best solutions needed to preserve future generations from a situation worse than the one we are in. Present generations do not have the right to deprive future generations from the welfare and health they deserve. <laughs> we, the Greens, we do not see the future as the waste bin of an, an unsustainable present, or as a space where we dumped the unsolved problems that allow us to go on with business as usual. And this generational interdependency obliges us to find new social and environmental contract based on intergenerational justice. We need to stop the logic of reciprocity. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. And move towards the, ethic, the ethical logic of transmission. If we want to be the voice of hope and the credible alternative, we need to show that we understand the necessary mediation between the heritage of the past, the priorities of the present, and the challenges of the future. Because this is the real challenge that democratic systems are facing today. This is the real challenge. Today, there is a battle over a value set. And it is green values that are best placed to win it. We also have the responsibility to push our societies to take responsibility for the future. Because it has been us, the Greens, in many multiple formats, through our parties, by us being present in the movement, by our activism, who have been vocal on sustainability, who have increased sensitivity and awareness of intergenerational justice and future risks. And here we are today, facing a difficult and complex political agenda. Just shortly before we started our Congress, we witnessed two very negative developments. Amelia has already mentioned one. President Trump signed the executive order that nullified Obama's climate policies. And Mrs. May triggered Article 50. What the current President of the United States is doing is very serious. Very serious. He's actually threatening the fight against climate change. And we Greens, we cannot remain only critical. We need to be able to develop strategies we need to search for new allies that allow us to keep our fight going on despite the, USA's, the USA stepping back. The role that the European Union will finally play is going to be a decisive one. We cannot give up because there is no time to be lost. We are the last generation able to stop the disasters of climate change. The next generations will only able, be able to mitigate its effects, and we need to deliver it on that responsibility. Whoops. With regards to Brexit, <clears throat> on uh, March 25th, we celebrated in Rome the 60th anniversary of the European Union. <clears throat> A former well-known minister asked, so what exactly are we celebrating? We Greens, we know very well what we were celebrating, and it is the very existence of the European Union. <clears throat> the very existence of the European Union. Because despite all its difficulties and limitations, despite all its challenges, the Greens still believe 
today that the European Union is the most democratic and the peaceful political, economical and solidarity entity that exists, the least unfair. That is what we Greens were celebrating in Rome. <clears throat> We're, we're fully aware of the current threats and challenges that the EU is facing today. We're fully aware of the disaffection of citizens are showing towards it, of the growth of nationalisms and populism, and of their anti-immigration and anti-European agenda. But at the same time, we must not forget that it has been in Europe where those national populisms have been recently defeated. In Austria, with the success of Alexander van der Bellen, and in the Netherlands, in the Netherlands, where the right wing did not achieve what they wanted. Aren't those huge, huge defeats? I want to formally congratulate also here our friends from Groen Leagues for their fantastic results. <clears throat> and we really hope that the next defeat will be for the Front National of Marine Le Pen in the upcoming presidential elections in France. <clears throat> 2019 the next European elections, they will be difficult. They will demand compromises because Europe needs to reset. We Greens will sit at the table with a preservative attitude to consolidate what we have already achieved, with a reformist attitude to what, what, towards what needs to be improved, and with a decisive attitude towards what still needs to be invented. That's how we will sit at the table. Because we're aware Brexit happened and it has been painful. We cannot ignore it. The discussion during the campaign demonstrated exactly what I said earlier. The majority of youth voted to remain. A big uh, majority of elderly voted to live, compromising the future of the young. The present fears conditioning the future of the young. We, went, we Greens want to transcend the results of the referendum with a strict negotiation strategy, yes, but nobody will know what Brexit will result in. But we advocate for a negotiation that keeps in mind the interest of both the EU and the UK citizens and that keeps the four freedom inseparable. Dear friends, I would like to conclude by talking about one of the essential actors of change, about women. Without the empowerment of women, there is no possible change. Without our leadership, there is no possible rebellion. And without the recognition of our rights, there is no real change. This Congress has taken a lot of work, but also has given a lot of satisfaction. The effort was definitely worth it. I repeat it again. John Lennon said, imagine all the people sharing all the world. I can only imagine it together with all of you. Thank you very much. Un fuerte abrazo. And have a safe trip home. Thank you.